All right, so back out at Leo Carrillo with Araya here. And today we're gonna try to paint on large canvases, 24 by 30s. All right, so you got the Yarka here. Yep. And it looks like it can handle this no problem. No problem. So the Yarka is a uh, Russian diesel, right? Yeah, it's an old Russian field diesel that, that was imported in the 80s and 90s. And okay. you got a screaming deal on this. Craigslist, bro. 100 bucks? <laughs> 100 bucks, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And I've got my usual Anderson easel. And we're going with stretch canvas today. Uh, these are Blick uh, canvases, back stapled. So we're both going to make something of this scene here. Um, but I think we will be moving the rocks around a bit. Uh, there's a lot of light over to the left, some glare on the water, which I think we're both interested in including, um, but that glare is gonna move in this direction as the sun starts going down. So there are no expectations for this painting other than just covering the canvas and completing the painting. We'll try to do it in the same amount yes. of time that we do like a normal plein air painting, like say, you know, a 12 by 16 or 16 by 20. So I'll say about two and a half hours. Doesn't matter if we crash and burn. The key is that we're just breaking into a larger size, right? Copy that. All right. Thankfully, Araya brought some burnt sienna down to the beach. I squeezed out acrylic. I bought a tube of acrylic by accident because somebody put <laughs> the, <laughs> the acrylic paint in the oil paint. Uh, location. Anyway, thank you, Araya. Much obliged. All right, so I'm going to put my horizon on the top third here, and I will do my best to show as much of the canvas as possible. But being that it's larger size, it's you know it's somewhat difficult to get the whole thing in the frame. All right, and the rocks in the foreground rise up above the horizon line, and then they come out to sort of a point here some other rocks here and then in the distance there's another landmass or just you know it's more rocks and I think what I'm going to try to do is lighten these rocks a bit to push them back in reality they're actually pretty dark uh, the key to a painting like this or like having a painting like this work out is having a nice arrangement of rocks okay and the waterline goes something like this. All right, and the waves start horizontal, but they sort of come in in a radial fashion like this. As usual, I'm using the scene as inspiration. I'm not trying to do a literal painting. I'm just trying to take the elements here that interest me and create an interesting composition, hopefully. Actually, I think I want this rock higher and a little bit smaller. Something like that. All right, as usual, going from the broad to the specific. Once I've got a pattern of rocks that I like, uh, then I can kind of look for the contours of the rocks, be a little more specific about those shapes. All right, in the distance here, this bit of rocks that come out. These rocks sort of join into this other group of rocks here. It's always important to walk back when painting in order to you know, judge your composition, but it's extra important when you're painting this size and you've got to get back about 30 feet. I really like how when the sun's shining over these big rocks in the water, you can see some orange poking through at the top and green. I like the overall feel of it too. I like how you've got, um, yeah, you've got this repeating pattern, this rock here, this one here, and then it's leading out into the distance. That's very cool. And you left like a, a high horizon, so you will get some sky in there. A little bit, yeah. I need. I, I was thinking about not putting it in, but given my composition, I need some some sky. All right, so there is the composition. I still may make some changes to this, but I think the basic shapes are working. Again, there's going to be light coming through here, and also waves. Okay, for my darks, I'm using ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, and I'm squinting at the scene trying to establish the dark patterns as quickly as possible. There's some shadows along here. And even though this is a big canvas, I'm scrubbing in using a number eight natural bristle flat because I like all the scrubby energy that I get into the painting using this brush. So it's nice to get some energy into the painting early on. 
and this scene is mostly backlit so having some high contrast here I think will be a good thing all right so for these rocks in the background I've added some titanium white to lighten up the mix a bit so I get some separation from the rocks in the foreground in reality these rocks are really dark but I want to make sure that I push them back I might exaggerate the blue and purple in these rocks in order to play off the yellow reflection that's going to be in the water but we'll see and the key thing I'm paying attention to is shapes you know if I don't like these shapes I've got to be honest with myself and change them I'm also going to try to push the color in this painting because I've really been enjoying uh, the saturated colors you know that I've been using lately or trying to use lately I might come in with something like ultramarine blue and titanium white in some of these so they're not too dark and have the those saturated blues you know play against the yellows just to give you an example all right so this side of this big rock mass is in shadow and there's some light that runs along the top and then this portion up here is also in shadow as I've talked about before one of the things that's nice about scrubbing in quickly is that little magical things happen that you wouldn't do if you're being careful all right so you're getting those darks put in there in the darks man yeah so how are you feeling so far like are you like having the extra room are you liking it. it or are you loving it I love it I and so great. were you apprehensive before starting a little bit a little bit I still I still I don't have the whole block in so we're not out of the woods yet but uh, I'm feeling a little bit more confident that I'm not sticking I'm not picking away at it so it feels it feels great it feels loose it feels and it's fun it's fun <laughs> that's the key Bingo. right right yeah yeah I see all right for the sky I've got ultramarine blue alizarin crimson and some titanium white just gonna scrub this in quickly and the sky has more ultramarine up towards the top and then goes more towards the cerulean as it gets towards the horizon going with phthalo blue and titanium white and then there's some cloud shapes that go off on an angle i might actually increase the angle here all right so the glare is moving over in this direction i'm gonna try to put in the water now i think i want the light to come in maybe like right around here the water is kind of a blue gray color um, but I'm paying attention to values here and the water is definitely lighter in value than the rocks quite a bit lighter I'm gonna try to leave some blank areas to suggest glare quite a bit of glare here in this foreground the water gets darker in the foreground which will help the uh, the glare stand out a few little bits of light out here but for now I'm just going to paint in this value I'm still trying to leave some of the orange of the sketch as well all right the sand is kind of a cool color so I've got kind of a yellow ochre mixed with white and and it's just got some gray from my palette to gray it down a little bit cool it off all right I think I'm going to start suggesting some of the wave patterns here uh, so I can get that radial action into the painting and some of the waves come all the way in so I want to have them crossing the glare portion and I might not want the light to run right off the bottom I'm not sure I love these subtle uh, color relationships you know these beautiful grays like this gray green with this you know bluer gray and then this more blue green gray thank you very very cool thank you all right so I want to get some yellow into these clouds and I'm using a mixture of titanium white cadmium yellow medium and also a bit of burnt sienna okay I want this cloud to come up this way here 
and I already had some blue on the canvas so I sort of I'm gonna have to come over and lighten this but I'm being very particular about the shapes here and although I'm not showing it I am walking back every few minutes to see how the whole painting is reading I like the little areas in the canvas, so maybe I can put some white water in without fighting the darks too much. It, yeah, exactly. So you kept some of the areas thin? Yeah, some of the areas thin and some of the areas just white altogether so I can I'm put, to, put some highlights yeah, on I'm there. I'm trying yeah. to think of my white water patterns. So the portion of these rocks that are in light are kind of a gray green, but I don't want that. I want to get some orange in this painting. Um, you know, I'm liking the bits of, of uh, burnt sienna. But I want to get the orange into this painting to play against the blues that I've got. Because again, I want to have, I want to push the color to um, increase the vitality of the painting. Adding some yellow in the water. I'm going to come over this paint with uh, some lighter and brighter paint. But just introducing a bit of yellow. All right, so after I did the scrub in, I came in and I started uh, trying to put loaded strokes. And I was using a number six natural bristle just to kind of build up some of these areas. I did have to lighten, you know, I lightened the distant rocks. Uh, and I kind of struggled a bit with this rock here, feeling like it was too big, but... I think the, you need to go bigger. There it is. <laughs> the rock needs to be bigger? No, you need to go bigger. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's a rise painting. Uh, two and a half hours, Araya? Yep. Yeah, let's get a look at some of that texture there. So did you use a, a palette knife at all to load some of those colors on there? Or yeah, some of the texture? Yeah, at the very end, I wanted... Uh, this was mostly brushes. You can see the kind of bristles in the brush, but the center reflection, I wanted to be kind of like um, chaotic. Oh, okay. So I, I figured the palette knife was the best. Yeah, a lot of energy. Thank you. Definitely. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Check it out. Also put uh, a link to Arise Instagram down below too. So check out his work on his Instagram. Other than that, stay creative. See you guys in the next video.